Okay, so in three, two, Ms. Jones, you can start at your leisure. Sorry, just a minute. I got, um, give me a minute. Why is this? I'm having some technical difficulties. Hang on, it just froze on me. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Horn. I was. Oh, no, I. Echo. Can you hear me now without the echo? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Do you want me to start, Mr. Corns, or are you going to do the three, two, one again? Ms. Joes, my apologies. I already counted you and it started the stream, so you can start at any time. Sorry, apologies for the technical difficulties. Good afternoon. The first item in, is a presentation of the preliminary design for Dundalk's high school edition. Um, this is the Baltimore County Board of Education, and for that I call on Mr. Dixit and staff for the presentation. Mr. Dixit. Thank you, Ms. Joes. Uh, um, my name is Pete Dixit. I'm Executive Director for Facilities Management and Strategic Planning. Tonight we are here to present um, a preliminary design for Dundalk High School Edition, just to give you a little bit of background for some of the newer board members. Uh, this project is included in our capital improvement program that has been approved by the board and is part of the uh, Southeast Area High School strategy where we need some additional seats. So there are two projects that have already been approved. One is the addition for Dundalk. Uh, the other will be Patapsco High School that will be coming to you, to you in future. So tonight we are here to present the preliminary design for Dundalk High School edition. No approval is needed. This presentation is for your review. Uh, all of the new construction, including this one, is, is, is uh, energy efficient uh, like any other school. Uh, we do, do not know exactly the time of completion for this, but we are shooting for somewhere around September of 25 or 26 depending on the supply chain issues. And before I give it to the consultant, I'd like to acknowledge the support we have gotten from Dr. Basil McComas and her team. I see Melissa Vistadi is here, Megan Shea is here, and the whole team for helping us with the educational specification and also the executive director, Mr. Sam Mustifer. In addition to them, Part of my team, um, Merrill Plate, who's the Director of Construction and Improvement, and uh, Mike Archbold, who's the Manager of Planning, and Mark Corl, who's the project, project Manager for this project. The project is designed by GWWO Architects, and they were also the designer of the original high school. So with this, I'll give it to Ms. Linda Duran of GWWO. So Linda, it's all yours now. Great, thanks Pete. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna share my presentation. Okay. 
Hey, everyone should see the presentation on the screen now. OK, so today we're going to go over the following. We'll touch on some important information and discuss the project and finish with some questions and answers. Here's a map of Baltimore County, and here's the location of the project we will be discussing today, the existing Dundalk and Sellers Point High School. The scope of this project is to provide an addition to the Dundalk High School portion of the existing Dundalk and Sellers Point High School. We are adding 717 seats to the Dundalk High School, bringing the combined facility SRC to 2562. This growth is partially due to the expansion of existing programs such as ESOL and CLS. As always, we aim to support 21st century learning techniques by providing features such as shared breakout and collaboration spaces throughout. We also implement sustainable design strategies. Here we will comply with the IGCC as an alternative green building compliance path. With minimal site work and no, public, no additional public entrances, we are maintaining the existing security features of the school. Some unique design features include a compact footprint, efficient circulation, and standardized classrooms. We continue to look at construction costs and how our design can be more efficient in today's market. The existing school and site is located in Dundalk, Maryland, east of 95, just outside of Baltimore City. It is not alone. It has a number of elementary and middle schools nearby. When we zoom in further, we can see the existing site and vicinity plan. The site is bordered on the east by CCBC, on the west and south by Dale Vale and Sellers Point Roads, and on the north by residential neighborhoods. When we began our investigation of the existing site in late 2021, the school had 11 relocatable classroom units scattered throughout the site. It was determined that due to security concerns, a single modular building would be needed. So summer 2022, an 18-classroom modular building was constructed on the site, allowing four of the smaller relocatable classrooms to, re to be removed in preparation for the future additions. When we think about where to locate the addition, we first studied the existing school layout. As you may know, the facility is unique and it houses two high schools in one building. The Sellers Point students occupy the east wing, the Dundalk students occupy the south west wing and the north wing has shared facilities such as the cafeteria and gymnasium. Here you can more clearly see the existing division of programs. The Dundalk High School wing primarily consists of general education spaces including specialty and special ed programs. The north shared wing contains the larger specialty programs such as physical education, performing arts, and CTE. All are connected by a common entrance and corridor system. The goal of this project is to eliminate the need for modular classrooms while also providing the ed spec spaces currently missing from the school. The scope is to provide 27 general classrooms, including specialty and special ed classrooms, nine CTE classrooms, and three performing arts classrooms. We aim to maintain the existing school's asset distribution and will locate the new spaces close to the existing spaces of similar program. There was always a plan to provide a fourth classroom pod addition to the school here. However, the performing arts spaces were not anticipated and therefore needed to be located in a different part of the site and closer to the existing music program. To make room for the second addition, the remaining relocatable classrooms will be removed. An addition containing the performing arts spaces will be located here. After the additions are constructed, the previously installed modular classroom unit will be removed. Here you see the proposed site plan showing the final layout and the location of two proposed additions. Before we present the addition floor plans, let's take a step back and take a closer look at the existing school layout. 
The existing school is set into a hill, but does not currently have a basement level. I'll expand on this further in the presentation. The first floor is partial and only includes spaces on the south wings of the school. The existing Dundalk science classrooms are located here on the first floor. The second floor is the main entrance level and where all the wings connect. The existing performing arts spaces are located here on the second floor. The third floor is also a partial level, only including spaces on the south wings. The existing visual arts classrooms are located here on the third floor. So let's take a look at the existing school with the additions. The south addition takes advantage of the existing hill and provides a partial basement level that exits to grade on the south base. The marching classroom pods continue on the first floor with the footprint matching the existing classroom pods. The second floor now also includes the north addition, a one-story addition which connects to the existing music spaces through interior corridors. That's better. To match the design of the existing pods, the south addition will include a third floor. The partial basement plan of the South Classroom Edition includes the Engineering and Tech Ed program, two general classrooms. This level is partially buried. However, it emerges from the hill on the south and west faces, bringing daylight into the classroom spaces. Because of the existing building does not currently have a basement, we've added an elevator to this pod, providing accessible access to the basement level spaces. The first floor includes five science classrooms, classrooms one general classroom and two special ed classrooms. It also includes the relocated greenhouse. The second floor includes six CTE classrooms, two general classrooms, three special ed classrooms, and an added ESOL resource space. Although we've distributed special ed classrooms throughout this four-story addition, we've congregated three of the sp six special ed classrooms, including the life skills classroom, on this level for ease of accessibility since the second floor is the main entrance level. The third floor includes 10 general classrooms, a special ed classroom, and the visual arts classroom. Now we'll take a look at the north classroom addition. The north addition includes the dance studio, group practice, and music lab classroom. It connects to the existing school through an existing interior corridor. We'll take a look at some um, exterior renderings. So this is a rendering of the South Edition. You'll see it will follow a similar design aesthetics to the existing building. This addition will be built into the hill, providing a partial basement level with on-grade exit on the south facade. A retaining wall will be provided, allowing the basement level tech ed classrooms to receive windows and natural light into these spaces. The greenhouse will be located in a similar location on the south side of the addition. The north addition, the arts addition, is located in the northeast corner of the building. This addition will also follow the existing building design aesthetics, providing a two-toned brick water table design. The north addition will have limited windows due to the nature of dance studio design. Take a look at schedule. We aim to complete the design in October of this year. Construction should start in March. And as Pete Nett mentioned, occupancy is still to be determined. And that's the end of the presentation. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Linda. We still have about 10 minutes, so if you have some questions, we'll try to answer them. Thank you. It looks like Mr. McMillian has a question. Go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Sure. Hello, Mr. Pete, and hello, everybody. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, 
the total number of classrooms was it somewhere around 40? Classrooms? I think it's uh, 15 plus special ed. So with the special ed, there were like six of those. So we're looking at 21 classrooms. Yes, no? Yes. 21. Are you are you asking about just general classrooms or no, the, overall? The classrooms in the, the 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 North Edition and the South Edition. The total number of classrooms available. So we have music classrooms. So we have three music classrooms, and then we have CTE classrooms and some specialty classrooms. Are you talking about overall? Yes, please. Okay. Thirty six overall plus the three thirty nine. OK, that was the, yeah, my guess was 40. OK, and can you go back to the second slide, a second or third slide where you were showing the uh, state ready capacity and. Uh, yeah, we're getting real close. Yeah, yeah, that one. What's interesting is. You very rarely ever see the Sellers Point and the Dundalk numbers combined into that. You usually see them separate. And I've, so I wanna get a picture of that. So just a second, I got that. Okay, great. Now, during the construction piece, so are you are you keeping the multi uh, trailer complex? I know you don't like using trailers, but the, the cottage complex, are you keeping that together while you're doing the additions? That's correct. What we call is a modular building. So okay. this is this is a little better than individual relocatable. We have worked closely with the school and uh, decided upon a place where it should be located. And uh, and that's what so that will help us. We have used that similar modular in other high schools during construction. And uh, this is the best alternative uh, that we can think of. OK, and Mr. Pete, is that similar to the complex that's at, at Patapsco now in the middle of the courtyard? Um, it's it's much better than that, but yes, yeah, somewhat similar. OK, thank you very much. Any other question? So yeah. if there are no questions, then we want to thank you for your time. And if you can think of any question later on, we'll be glad to answer those questions. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dixit and team for the presentation. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, March 13th, 2023. In accordance with the board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting a discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faye or Ms. Joes if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faye, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Ms. Joes? Present. Mr. McMillian? Present. Ms. Harvey? Present. Ms. Hen? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Feo. Uh, Ms. Feo, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. 
Thank you, Ms. Jost. Mr. Agocho? Present. Mr. Hartlove? Present. Dr. Holmes? Present. Mr. Kevin Connolly? Present. Mr. Pete Dixit? Present. Ms. Allison Myers? Present. Ms. Megan Shea? Present. Ms. Dr. Melissa Wistead? Present. Ms. Jamie Hetzler? Mr. Merrill Plate? Present. Ms. Melanie Webster? Present. Mr. Michael Archgold? Ms. Lisa Dingle? Present. Mr. Brian Stoll? Present. Mr. John Salerno? Present. Mr. Mark Coral? If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your names now. Cameron Williams. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thea. Good evening, everybody. And uh, this is Molly Joes, Chair of the Building and Contracts Committee. Um, I will now turn it over to Mr. Hartlow. Please state your name for the record and proceed with presenting the first contract. Um, good, <clears throat> excuse me, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Hartlow. I'm Chief Financial Officer for the system. Um, our first contract is LKO. 423-19 interpreting services for deaf or hard of hearing individuals. Uh, this is a contract modification which will provide for continued interpret interpreting services for deaf or hard of hearing individuals supported by the Department of Special Education. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $700,000 um, from 2.5 million bringing uh, the total to $3.2 million. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? Uh, let me look at chat. Um, hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Yes, uh, LLY-425-22, non-public special education uh, facilities. And this is uh, all we're doing on this contract is we're uh, asking for approval um, is requested to add three approved schools to the contract. There are 53 schools on the contract approved by the board on Tuesday, April 5th, 2022. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed to the next contract. ARA. 224-17 engineering and technology and biomedical curricula program. This contract modification will continue to provide for the engineering and technology and biomedical curricula program for the Office of Career and Technology Education. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $1,750,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $2,000,000. $888,500 with one awarded contractor approved by the board on Tuesday, June 13th, 2017. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Um, I, I do have one question. This looks like it's an extension of a contract from 2017. Um, is this curriculum only for select schools? How do you pick the schools that will be um, selected to take part in this biomedical program. We have we have it's a good good question. We have staff on on the line to respond. I think Ms. Shea is uh, turning yeah. her mic off. On actually, hi. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, that's OK. Uh, thank you for the question, Ms. Joseph. Yes, so the um, this is curricula specifically for the Project Lead the Way program. So that is currently actually in uh, elementary, middle and high school. 
So um, we have your question was actually about how we select. So the process and um, for selecting where we place CTE programs is multifaceted. Typically what we do is we work with our um, Department of Economic and Workforce Development as well as labor statistics to see what are the industries in Baltimore County and then specifically in different regions. We also wanna make sure that we have representation of all of the different CTE clusters and pathways of study across the geographic zones and that we have projects available both in our comprehensive programs of study available both in our comprehensive high school as well as through our shared time centers and through magnet programming. So currently we have, so that was your first question about how do we choose? Um, currently, we have two high school project lead the way or PLTW programs. The biomedical sciences is at Franklin, Lansdowne, Lock Raven, Milford Mill, Newtown, Perry Hall, Sellers Point, and Woodlawn. So hopefully you heard me kind of going around the beltway. Um, and then we also have the um, Project Lead the Way Engineering Program, which is in Catonsville, Chesapeake, Delaney, Dundalk, Owings Mills, Parkville, Pikesville, Perry Hall, and Woodlawn. Um, so those are our high school programs, and this particular curricula will be to support the ongoing purchase of curricular materials um, as enrollment continues to grow in those programs. Um, the other piece that is really exciting is that we have started building backwards to create that pathway earlier and give students access and opportunity even younger. We do have uh, 16 PLTW gateway programs, which is the middle school curricula. And when choosing where to go with those programs, we look at feeder patterns to the high school so that students have a pathway to follow as they continue to get excited around uh, Project Lead the Way and those engineering um, pathways. Um, and then we also have five elementary schools that are in PLTW launch. This program um, was uh, part of a grant, so we had a small opportunity, uh, again, looking at some of those feeder pathways, but then also had to work collaboratively with schools because the PLTW launch typically occurs um, as more of an extracurricular pathway or supplement. So we work in partnership with schools. Um, I'm happy to share the gateway schools and launch schools as well, but um, I know your question was specifically around um, the programs of study at the high school level. Okay, thank you. Committee members, any more questions? Thank you, Ms. Shea. Hearing sure. none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Sure. LK O-416-19 Music Instruments, Supplies and Materials. This contract modification will provide for the continued purchase of music instruments, supplies and materials for the Office of Performing Arts. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $380,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $3,280,000 with seven awarded Contractors approved by the board on Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. RGA-110-12 textbooks, technology education grades 9 through 12. This contract modification will provide for continued purchase of grades 9 through 12 technology education textbooks and teacher materials for the Department of Teaching and Learning. Approval is requested to increase spending authority by $350,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $525,000 with one awarded vendor approved by the board on Tuesday, October 11th, 2011. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. CWA-120-23 School Library Collection Resources. This is a new contract to provide school library collection resources for the Department of Teaching and Learning. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with the option to extend for five years with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $5,315,000. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Um, I do have a question. This is a new contract. Has this been approved by the Curriculum Committee? Um, yes, it, it went to the uh, February 23rd uh, Curriculum Committee. 
OK, thank you. Um, so it comes recommended from them, correct? Correct. Uh, hearing no questions, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Sure, NTA-507-23 pre-kindergarten instructional materials. Uh, this is a new contract for pre-kindergarten instructional materials and related professional development for the Office of Early Childhood. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with the option for one five-year extension with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1 million. And this was also approved at the February 23rd, uh, 2023 Curriculum Council meeting. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Um, I do have a quick question for Ms. Shea. Is pre-K offered in all of our elementary schools now? Or? It's, it's yeah, actually, that's actually a Dr. Wistead question, <laughs> she'll take that. <laughs> yeah, Lisa Dingle and I are here. It is not offered at every elementary school. We still have some schools that do not have pre-kindergarten half day or full day sessions. And is it just a budget um, and staffing resource why we don't have it at all schools? I, I know it's not related to the contract, but just out of curiosity. It, it's more of a space um, issue at this time, but we are working with our Office of Strategic Planning and Physical Facilities to explore ways that we can offer it um, not only in all of our schools, but definitely also, as you know, through the blueprint we've been talking about using leveraging our private providers so that we can offer it to all the families which we are required to do up to 300 percent poverty. OK, um, thank you, Dr. Bissett. Thank you, Ms. Dingle. Um, You're welcome. Any more questions, committee members? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Yes. NTA-517-23 Video Production Equipment and Associated Services. This is a new competitively bid contract for the purchase of video production equipment and associated services for the Office of Library Media Programs and Educational Technology. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $2,500,000. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none. Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. ARA-223-18 modification, student growth and achievement assessment. Um, this is a consent to assignment of this contract from Northwest Evaluation Association to Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. So nothing has changed on the amounts or the time or any of that. And, and why is the is that a name change or is that a vendor change? It's a name change. It's I um, I think they've actually I think Houghton Mifflin has has I believe they bought the Northwest Evaluation okay. Association. I see Ms. Webster shaking her head, so thank you for that. She's keeping me honest. <laughs> All right, um, I see no other questions. So Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. ARA-203-19 cable and wiring material and services inside and outside plant. Uh, this contract modification will provide for the continued cabling and wiring materials and services for the Division of Information Technology. Approval is requested to extend the contract for one year, six months, and one year and six months with 25 awarded contractors approved by the board on Tuesday, October 9th, 2018. Committee members, any questions? Um, hearing none. Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next one. JBO-707-21 Radio Communications Master Contract 2018. Um, this is uh, appro approval is requested to add one vendor to the nine recommended uh, bidders approved uh, by the board on Tuesday, February 9th, 2021. Thank you. I. Don't see any questions from committee members. Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. 
Okay, the next one is just for me actually. NTA-514-23 ice cream and ice cream freezers. Um, this is a new competitively bid contract for ice cream and ice cream freezers for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested for a five year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1,750,000. Mr. Joe, I have a question. <laughs> I knew Mr. McMillan would have a question about the ice cream, so go ahead. Yeah, I'm still trying to, five years later, I'm still trying to understand this. Uh, so, so we're buying the ice cream. Seems like these are the same questions I asked five years ago. Uh, so I'm, I'm confused on, I'm thinking that foods and nutrition is a self-sustaining program that's kind of out there by itself. So the the monies that come in help them, you know, pay their bills and all, and they're self sufficient. Is that yeah. accurate? That that is yes. accurate. And the reason we have to bid it is we're still we're still trying to buy uh, the the ice cream at the best price and that meets our our, our uh, you know. So even though ultimately this is getting paid for by either the fed if it's a if it's a federally uh subsidized meal it's either being put, paid for by the federal government or by a student if they buy the ice cream we still have to bid it out and make sure we get a good price and um and yes we show the price here but you know it's not costing the system that because it will ultimately be uh reimbursed through uh through folks for, through students paying either being us being re re reimbursed for lunches or students paying for um, in, in case this is not a launch, it's a um, um, not a launch, but it's a you think of the other word I'm looking for, but uh, a la carte. So, so I am. So we're not paying for it. It's showing up. We're not paying for it. Somebody else is paying for it, but we're betting it. Is that right? That is correct. OK, yes, sir. thank you. Thank you. It looks like Miss Harvey, you have a question. I think it may have been answered uh, by Mr. McMillian's question. My question was really about the equipment because it said for ice cream and the equipment. And was this, this was equipment that we're having to purchase every five years, but it's paid through for a different source. We we're just bidding. Okay, I see head shaking no. <laughs> so help me understand. Ms. Webster, you want to uh, pick that one up? I can, John would be equally capable. Uh, well, we do not purchase the freezers. The company that provides the ice cream also provides the freezers. The freezers are their property. Yes, the, uh, the main part of the contract is just the novelty ice cream that we sell in the elementary schools. But as part of the contract, we ask them to supply up to 100 storage freezers for the schools that need them. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we had a lot more questions in the ice cream, but I should remember <laughs> actually approving a contract for ice creams. Uh, maybe it was last year. How was that contract different? Was that purchase of ice creams and this is ice cream freezers? There was an ice cream contract um, last year, I believe. Uh, uh, I will take a quick look for that if you'd like. Yeah, and if you don't have to do it right now, if you could just, um, I remember there were a lot of questions on that ice cream contract uh, from board members as well. So if you could, you don't have to do it right now, if you could just email, that would be fine. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if this is the situation, but um, we piggybacked a contract with Anne Arundel County a couple of years ago because we did not have one in place, um, this current contract would be solely Baltimore County Public Schools. Okay, all right, um, thank you. I don't see any more questions, so Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Sure, LLY-2023-0001 
2-406-22 Workforce Management Systems and Related Products and Solutions. This contract modification will provide for the continued use of timekeeping software for the Department of Fiscal Services. Approval is requested to extend the contract for one year and increase contract spending authority by $650,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $3,877,900 with one awarded contract contractor approved by the board on Tuesday, November 9th, 2021. Okay, again, this contract seems familiar, so I look, it was already approved. Uh, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Hartlow. I believe Mr. Dixit will be presenting the next contract. So good evening again. Uh, next contract is KSH 352-18. This is for full service to chair lift, vertical lift, platform lift, and dumbwaiter. Uh, includes preventive maintenance, repair, any new installation. The request is for extending the term of the contract by three months uh, in order for purchasing uh, to prepare documents uh, to get a new contract or new solicitation. There is no additional money or time uh, other than three months requested. OK, so this is uh, thank you, Mr. Dixit. This is an extension of a contract because I remember the dumb waiter question yes. coming up to how many schools actually have a dumb waiter. Um, so so there's only one school that had dumb waiter. Yes, I remember <laughs> that was a question when it was approved. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next one. Uh, next contract is KSH-309-19 for inspection, maintenance, repair, and installation of bleachers and stadium seating. The request is to modify the amount by 100,000 uh, due to additional needs. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. Next contract is CWA-115-23 for doors, interior and exterior. Uh, this contract, uh, it will provide purchase of interior and exterior door. Uh, this is for material and it's a $500,000 contract for a period of five years. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is GDA-312-23 for safety shoes. The contract is in the amount of 750,000, term for five years, and this will allow us to purchase shoes for our employees that need them, includes employees for transportation and food and nutrition. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Uh, so Mr. Dixit, we provide shoes, these safety shoes for all of our facilities, uh, staff and groundskeepers as well. It's those folks who are involved in the kind of function where safety is needed. A lot of these are AFSME employees uh, uh, and also some non-AFSME members. It's like building service worker, technicians, carpenters, mechanics, those kind of people. OK, thank you. I don't see any more questions, so Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is NTA-513-23 HVAC refrigeration and equipment and parts. Uh, this is a five year contract. Uh, for purchasing parts to complete HVAC and refrigeration repairs. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So next contract, GDA 313-23 is for building renovation and alteration services. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of background to clarify this. This is a $20 million contract for a period of five years. So each year it will be $5 million. This contract is used for 
work that is less than 300,000 and that's time constrained. So if we do not have time for bidding or if the uh, projects have tight timeline uh, or because of the constraints of school operation, a lot of small projects, less than $300,000, we utilize this contract and there are seven different companies that will be awarded to is listed in the board exhibit. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is CWA-120-22. This is for roofing and building envelope services. Uh, again, I'll provide you a little bit of background information on this contract because of the amount. The previous spending authority that board had approved was $30 million. We are asking for additional $100 million in that contract, and this has to do with the large number of roofs that are included in the capital improvement program that has uh, been approved by the board, and it will be awarded to uh, a under the Association of Educational Purchasing Agencies, Eastone Purchasing Network. The name of the company is Weatherproofing Technology. And part of the reason for this large amount is uh, very high escalation in the cost of roofing. So what we were paying $20, $25 per square feet, uh, in last 18 months, the price has gone up to $60 per square foot. So it's 100 200% increase in the cost of roofing. And roof repairs and replacement are needed, and they have been approved. Most of the projects are funded under capital program. So I wanted to provide that background information. Thank you for that information. It looks like Mr. McMillian has a question. I'm, I'm actually ahead of myself. They're playground questions. So I'm coming to that next. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. McMillian only has questions on ice creams and playgrounds. And, yes. and, uh, and artificial turf. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Please proceed with the next contract. So next contract is LKO-404-21. And this is to um, these are two contracts, so before Mr. McMillian asks the question, I think I should help you. Contract LKO-40421 and contract MBU-524-19. Uh, the first one is a million dollar addition. Um, we are asking an addition of a million dollars. And the second one we are asking for and an addition of $1.8 million. And this is uh, the reason for these contract is that in the recent past, we have been approved a lot of additional funding that we did not know at the time original contracts were approved in 21. So this will allow us to complete those projects in time. Now I'm open for questions. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Mr. McMillian, please proceed with your question. Mr. Pete, the two contracts look very, very similar. What's the difference between the two of them? So the reason they are two contract, one of them has to do with game time and miracle play structure, which is MBU 524.19. The other one, LKO 404.21, is source well, which is for little tykes play structures and three other vendors. So main reason to simplify uh, access to different types of vendors, different vendors. OK, thank you. Thank you. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is ASI-808-22, and this is construction services for artificial turf field. The contract is spending authority that we are requesting is six million dollars. Uh, we are asking for an extension for uh, uh, one year, one month. And the reason for this request is that in the past, a lot of this work was being done 
by county. From here on, we are trying to do this work by ourselves, managing us. Uh, the original contract, whenever we had come to you for request, uh, did not include the uh, anticipated new work that we are going to do ourselves. Thank you. Any more questions, committee members? Yeah, Ms. Joes. To follow up with Mr. Pete's comment about, and and that's what I was thinking that we, you know, up to this point, aren't the the vendors involved that they they do the construction piece of this? How are BCPS employees going to be involved in the construction? So we are going to be inspecting it to make sure that this work meets our spec. The contractor really is the same contract that Baltimore County government uses. Um, they, their master agreement 4365 is the same contract, but we'll be doing it ourselves. Uh, we'll dis decide the schedule, coordinate with school, and inspect the work. And and Mr. Pete, back in the day, I, I was familiar with, with when Chesapeake got a couple, I was there when they got two new roofs. And there was actually BCPS inspectors on those job sites. So now that's what we're going to do with the artificial turf. That's right. Most of our jobs are inspected by us to make sure that the work is done efficiently, that we pay them the right amount and the work meets the specifications that we have prepared. Thank you very much. Thank you. I see no more questions, Mr. Dixit. Please proceed with the next contract. The next contract, and I believe the final contract, is NTA-515-23 for electronic parts, supplies, and installation. The contract amount is 2,500,000, and the term is five years. And this repair is typically needed in different electronic systems, intercom, uh, auditorium lights, scoreboards, press box, those kind of items that have electronic components. That's where we use this contract. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Dixit, very much for your uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that uh, items 1 through 24 be moved to the full board for approval. Do I have a motion for approval of contracts 1 through 24 for board action? Ms. Joes, I'll do that. Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian, for that. Do I have a second? Uh, seconded. This is Ms. Harvey. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Um, those. In favor, please say yes, and those opposed, please say no. Ms. Faya, please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. S Mr. McMillian. Yes. Ms. Harvey. Yes. Ms. Han. Ms. Jost. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faya. Uh, with three yeses, the motion passes. Contracts one to twenty-four will be moved forward to the board for tomorrow's meeting. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee will be held on Monday, April 17th at 5 p.m. Um, I would like to take a minute to thank all of the staff in the past um, four years on the board that have been very helpful in answering all of the building and contracts committee. Um, thank you for everything that you do. And is there any further business? Hearing none, the the meeting is now adjourned and thank you for joining us. Have a good evening. Thank you good very evening, much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.